Yes, so Finn Harps, not the only First Division side to knock out Premier Division opposition. And I suppose the shock of that round was certainly uh, Shamrock Rovers going out at United Park in Drogheda. And um, to be fair, <laughs> you'd have to say Drogheda deserved it. Um, Richie, when you look at Shamrock Rovers from their point of view, this was a, a, a competition that they've been synonymous with, but the, the drive for 25 certainly stalled on Friday night. It did, yeah. I think Tim Clancy and his players um, deserve huge, huge praise for what they did the other night. 17-year-old um, William Hondemark was one of the outstanding players on the night. He's involved here in the build-up. Lee Grace gets sent off for what he does in a moment here. It's cynical, it's deliberate. He clearly knows what he's doing. He's denying Hondemark an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. I don't think the referee had any decision or any reason to question his decision. Joey O'Brien was coming across, so maybe Grace didn't need to make the, the challenge that he did. Lions then takes the, the, the penalty kick and scores. But the difference, Tim Clancy mentioned it in terms of the wages and the budget and the resources of the two clubs. Jordan were missing Sean Brennan, their top scorer, their main man, their captain in midfield. They have a very young team. I think the average age is about 22. In addition to the 17-year-old, the two 19-year-olds on the left. Um, and most of those players would have had day jobs that day before playing that match tonight, which gives you an idea of the... the they, they operate in two different worlds completely, Stephen Bradley and Tim Clancy. So the result was outstanding and the performance was just as impressive. They didn't get a goal and sit back, as you saw from the footage, when they had opportunities to get forward in numbers they tried to do so. And probably at the end of the game, as well as being happy with the clean sheet, probably a little annoyed they didn't get a second. What does it say about Shamrock Rovers? This is a trophy that they love. We can't call them Cup Specialists anymore, of no, course. That's a, no. that's a statement laced with irony these days. But, uh, I mean, where does this leave them? Well, they haven't won this since 1987. Um, I actually, after the performance in Stockholm, Tony, where they played really, really well and were lucky, unlucky to go out, I thought they were going to win the cup this season. I thought they looked like they had clicked, the formation clicked, the players, what's coming into the team, Joey O'Brien going into a three in centre back position. They'd gone six matches, five wins and a draw. I think it was their best spell of the season. It must have been a situation where there was complacency. They were going to draw the look and the draw the, as a. Because this, this a was no fluke, was it? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't a fluke on the evidence of what we saw and what, we, what people have said about the game. The draw deserved to win them. They had chances to, to tag on other goals in the match. But it seems that Shamrock Rovers weren't on the ball. They weren't properly at it for the match. Keelan didn't get all the time in the world here to set up and shot. And goalkeeper make, makes a good save. Manus in goal. Another, another chance comes back here. And it, it, it was touch and go for Rovers all the time where they conceded the second goal. It was up to the big players they had to produce the goods and find a way to get them back into the game. A draw, get the extra time, win the match. But in the match, look at it sprinting away from Rovers defenders. Too slow recovering, should have stuck in the net to make it 2 nothing. But a and, and, you know, the, magnificent the, victory for Drogheda. A lot of people talk about the Shamrock Rovers project and how the, the youth side of it is, is, is bearing fruit already. Um, but you have, to, you have to win trophies, don't you? Isn't that your job? Well, is it? well, the priority should be about winning trophies, putting the best team out on the pitch to win matches, putting the best players on the bench to win the game. It shouldn't be about putting young players who are possibly saleable onto the team. Now they're out of this competition, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter that the youth system is going great. That's for next year. This year, they're not going to win a trophy. They would have been expecting to give it a good run this year. They're way off in the league and they're out of the cup. So it's, a, it's, 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 it's not a good situation. And that's one that they let slip away, slip away. Not a huge amount of magic in the cup this year so far. We can talk about that a bit later on. But there was a magic moment at Whitehall, uh, home farm against the, the cup holders, Cork City. Richie, talk us through this one. There was. Yeah, it was certainly one of the goals of the round. Might be back in the discussion about goal of the month with Sean, Go Sean Golding just in the halfway line. This is probably one of those situations. He's looked up in the keeper in earlier stages of the game, noticed the cherry comes off his line, is waiting for the opportunity to present itself, and took it, took it really well. Really good, quick thinking. You can see he looks up. Technical uh, ability required to do that is quite high. But the standout moment for them in what was it? This 